Okay, so before we jump into the subjunctive, I just wanted to mention a quick note about the imperative, which we just learned about. Very, very rarely will native speakers actually use the imperative, especially with people they don't know very well. This is because the imperative is a very direct way of saying something to somebody, and um, it can often be construed as being rude uh, to, to say so directly, do this, do that, buy this, go here, turn left. All these are, are, are kind of um, almost even offensive if, if used incorrectly. Um, or, or used with people whom you don't have the, the level of fami familiarity. So, for example, um, instead of saying, cuando llegues al, al semáforo, dobla a la izquierda, they might say, cuando llegues al semáforo, doblas a la izquierda. It's like saying, when you get to the stoplight, you turn um, you turn left, or you're going to turn left, um, rather, than, rather than them imposing their will so directly upon you. Remember when we learned about tener que versus hay que? They, they often have these ways of making, making things less direct and less, um, less uh, strong. So that's why so many, in so much of the content that we actually looked at, the native content, um, even in the, the dozens of songs and stories and narratives, you, you very, very rarely actually saw an in, imperative conjugation because it is that rare and is only used with very, um, very familiar situations like a husband talking to a wife or something like that. So in, in most tourist situations, you wouldn't actually use the imperative. Um, you would more likely use something like the, the subjunctive, um, which is what we'll be learning about next. So... Um, instead of saying, uh, when you get to my city, stay at this hotel, they would probably say, um, I recommend you stay at this hotel. Recomiendo que quedes, que te quedes en ese hotel. Um, and again, they, they might also use uh, the, the indicative, just to say, cuando llegues a mi ciudad, te quedas en, en ese hotel porque es muy lindo. Um, that that would be another fine way of, of saying it. Um, they'll also more often use the conditional, which is something we'll be learning about later, as opposed to the imperative. So, for example, if you're sitting at a table and you wanted somebody to pass the salt, you would say, ¿Podrías pasarme la sal? Not, ¿Pasarme la, la sal? That's, that's too direct for most situations. Um, same with venir. ¿Podrías venir? Um a mi casa, o podrías venir al hotel, something like that, instead of ven a mi hotel, that, that's very direct and very strong, um, and, and again, it's going to be uh, the same when you're asking for a phone number, it's going to be more common and, and more polite, and more proper to say, podrías darme tu, telef tu número de teléfono, not um, dame tu, tu número de teléfono, that's, that's too strong, um, and also, if you wanted to, to ask to borrow somebody's phone, it would be too strong to say, préstame tu teléfono. It would be more polite and more proper to say, podrías prestarme tu teléfono if you needed to, to borrow somebody's phone. So, um, although the, the imperative tense has a lot of great grammatical, um, and it's used as a stepping stone to learn about the subjunctive, which is what we'll do next, uh, in actual use, especially with people that you, you don't have the level of familiarity as a husband and a wife or a mother and a son, um, you wouldn't use this imperative. It's too direct. So I just wanted to let you know that, that cultural note about the imperative before we moved on.